Hi there, my name is Katie Manning. I am a research scientist in geography at King's College London. I work there three days a week and tutoring has provided me with an additional means of understanding more about the education system and getting into the philosophy of learning for younger children. So I am from London. I was educated mostly in London but also in Dubai and Paris. My approach to teaching is very much an individualised one, so I feel that every student has their own unique way of learning. And so for me, the real key thing is to try and find what the most effective means of communication is to enable kind of the most successful and most, particularly the most enjoyable um, form of learning. In terms of the kind of students and the kind of um, successes that I've had as a tutor, I find that for me the main, most rewarding type of experience is taking a student who perhaps really doesn't enjoy the subject or who has really struggled to connect with the subject and then providing them with the tools to enable them to, to really enjoy the process of learning. So I've been able to take students who because of that inability to connect to a subject have gone from a D grade or a C grade at GCSE right up to an A or an A star. Um, I've also supervised numerous undergraduate and masters and PhD students, some of whom have now gone on to permanent academic positions, so that's very rewarding to see um, that the input I've been able to, to put in has really uh, kind of paid off. The reasons that I became a tutor were the type of work I do as a research scientist is very much aimed at adults. and. Since having young children, I particularly was keen to kind of extend my teaching abilities to a younger generation. Um, so that's, that's really kind of where the, the impetus for me to become a tutor came from. Um, the way that I tend to customise my lessons, I find it is really imperative at the beginning to assess both the weaknesses and strengths of a student um, but also what their expectations of me are as a tutor. So I particularly find that different students, according to their background, their education, their cultural, um, their cultural background, has really made a difference in terms of what they expect from a tutor and from the learning experience. Um, I work with a lot of Chinese students at King's College London, where I work, where we have really found that there's an expectation of a more structured lesson. And in order to provide the best sort of education in that environment, we've really tried to adapt the way in which we structure our lectures and structure our seminars. How do I make lessons engaging? Um, there's, a very, there's a huge difference, I find, between online uh, education and in-person tuition. Um, I find that, for me, visual, visual resources are really key, particularly when it comes to the, the younger um, age groups, so particularly around sort of five to, to ten, I find that visual stimuli are really the best way of trying to transmit messages, trying to communicate knowledge. Um, some students will respond much better to auditory stimuli, others perhaps to practical examples. So again, this is partly to do with the individualization of learning and finding out really what is the most effective way of getting lessons across and getting that knowledge transmitted. So I find that the reason why geography is such an important subject for all students to take really from quite a young age is because we live in a globalised international world these days. Understanding both the human geography side of the world we live in and the physical geography side of the world we live in is, is absolutely paramount in today's society with climate change, with cultural diversification. Being able to have a, a ground understanding of these things from an early age, I think, allows you as, as an adult to go into the world and, and to interact with a lot of the issues that we're facing in a much more holistic way, in a much more informed way. Um, geography is divided very much into two camps. So we have human geography, which is more about the geopolit geopolitics and the human dimension, so demographics and um, gender issues. On the other hand, we have physical geography. I'm, I'm much more of a physical geographer, um, and that's more to do with earth systems um, and earth processes. And both of these things uh, come with their, with their own challenges. Some students find that they have a much greater 
um, proclivity towards the human geography, whereas others may find that the physical geography really kind of is more their, their thing. The, when it comes to how to teach specific topics within geography and some of the things that students have struggled with, I find that often geo-referencing, latitude, longitudes, are really quite tricky, particularly at the age of around seven or eight. So with that, I tend to use a lot of mapping tools. So these days we are so, you know, we are in such a great position with all of the online mapping tools that we have. So giving students, for example, a task of finding a location, finding its latitude, longitude, its elevation, and then we all come back together and we assess how we came to that information, um, what the resources that we used were, um, and the great thing with a lot of this mapping is that it, it provides students with a sense of being their own little explorer. Um, and I found that really works with particularly younger children who are desperate to explore the world and, and know a little bit more about, about where they live. So we tend to often use locations that people may be familiar with um, and then look at the physical environment in, in for example, Google Maps um, together as, as a class.